What's up everybody? So today I'm here to share my thoughts on The Land of Stories for Beyond the Kingdoms by Chris Colfer. So a little backstory, Chris was actually in my hometown a week ago to do a signing for this book and I think he's still currently on tour for this book. So my copy is, has my ticket in it first of all, number seven in line, which is pretty awesome. So I got it right away. And also it is signed on the inside. And when I met him I just kind of word vomited about how much I love him and the books and I just kind of stuttered through my like 10 seconds of interaction with him as they pushed everyone through the autograph line but he was like adorable in person and super sweet and he was just smiling and nodding along to what I was saying and like thanks me for coming and it's like why are you thanking me you wrote these awesome books and you're sitting in line signing a thousand books a day and like the kid is so humble and he's so great why am I calling my kid he's like 10 years older than me 25 his birthday was in May he's 25 so he is eight years older than me. I'm kind of lucky that I got ticket number seven, but I'm not really lucky because I kind of rushed to my phone as soon as the tweet went out that he was coming and called the bookstore immediately. And out of like a thousand tickets, I was number seven. So that was cool. Anyway, on to my thoughts about the book. Fair warning, this video will have spoilers both for the past three books in the series and for the fourth. So if you haven't read them, then I would advise to click away now. Go ahead, press the little YouTube icon or the X or a related video or something gone. Okay, cool. Let's get talking. Now, I kind of have this series as one of my guilty pleasure reads because it is a children's book series. But at the same time, Chris does include, like, adult jokes and little things that kids won't get. And he does make us that it's more of a family read, if that's possible. Like, Disney movies aren't kid movies. They're family movies. These are, like, family books. <laughs> that's such a weird thing to say but it's true and also Chris Colfer has been one of my favorite celebrities actors whoever whatever since 2009 when Glee first aired on TV and I like looked up to him as a tiny little fifth sixth grader watching Glee and I read Struck by Lightning when he wrote it and loved it and so whenever these books came out I was just like fairy tales but a children's book but fairy tales. And so I read them, and I love them. So I do not regret delving into yet another children's series. God knows I've read enough of those. You can't see half of them because they're on the floor, but trust me, there's a lot more on that shelf. Okay, anyway. So Land of Stories 4 Beyond the Kingdoms follows the story of the Bailey twins, Alex and Connor, as they continue on their quest to stop the masked man and, and to stop his plot to destroy the Land of Stories. Now, the third book, Grim Morning, ended on a cliffhanger where we thought the masked man was Alex and Connor's father. Turns out that's not true. He's their uncle, which doesn't make it much better, because still, evil running in the family is not, not a nice thing to have. But I do like that... I'm going to put this down now. But I do like that the whole family aspect of it kind of caused more conflict between both Alex and the whole fairy tale world, but also between Alex and Connor. But I'm also really glad that that conflict didn't last too long because I love their sibling relationship and I would have hated for this whole book to be them like mad at each other and angry because there are enough like TV shows and books and movies that have like conflicting twin relationships and it's just so stressful to watch. <laughs> and so I'm really glad that Alex and Connor still have such a good brother sister relationship, even though. Everyone seemed to be against Alex in the beginning of this book because of the way she would have these violent outbursts and get really, really emotional at the fact that she thought her father was the evil man trying to kill everybody in her kingdom. Another thing I noticed is that the books are getting more mature as Alex and Connor grow up. They're now 14, almost 15 in this book, and they started off the first book when they were 12. And so I've always been about two, three years older than the Bailey twins. And it's really, really cool to see them progress and age up. Their aging is really natural and like really, like realistic. One thing I had kind of a love-hate relationship with this book about was Brie, because she was one of my favorite characters in A Grim Warning. Like I adored her throughout the whole thing. And then in Beyond the Kingdoms, I thought there was going to be one of two outcomes. Either she wasn't going to be important to the plot at all, or that she was going to be a huge part of the plot. And I was wrong, because she was important in her own 
development and plot, but not to the actual central point of the story. And I both missed her and loved the way that he included her. Because I like that she was there. I like her new backstory, the fact that she does have magical blood and she's related to the brother's grim or the sister's grim or whichever. And I also love the fact that it foreshadows and hints at the fact that she's going to be more important in the next book. But I also hate that she wasn't really there in this book. I think there were three chapters focusing on Brie, but other than that, she was just gone. Connor mentions her once in the story, and he's trying not to think about it because he's upset about her not being there with him, but other than that, she's just kind of off everyone's minds. And I get that she's a minor character, kind of, ish. She's a minor character in this book, definitely. But I am really, really looking forward to the next book coming out, which will probably be sometime around this time next year, and I'm really hoping to see that Brie has become more of an important, well, more of a more central character again, because I loved her, and also the ship tease with her and Connor, like, made my heart swell in the last book, and I really need that back, because it was really, really cute. Speaking of shipping, I feel like Chris is kind of, like, living his own little fantasy in terms of, like, Alex's romantical flings in this book because she gets paired off with a young King Arthur which I thought was hilarious but also that is exactly what I would do if I were writing a book and I had a 14 year old girl character I'll be like yep she's gonna date King of Camelot cool that's exactly what I would do and it was cute I love the way Chris writes their like cute little juvenile romance because it's just it just seemed so natural. Like, it wasn't like, oh, they met and now they're gonna kiss because they're in so in love already. It's like, it was quick because they only knew each other for two weeks, but it was also like a natural development and it didn't seem rushed or like forced or anything. And also, it was adorable and heartbreaking. And Chris likes to break my heart with romances because now twice that Alex has had her heart broken in the span of two books, which is upsetting, but also makes me kind of look forward to the future and is going to see what Chris does with that, because he also kind of gave Rook a redemption arc, a little bit, tiny little redemption, and I'm both afraid and intrigued about what he's going to do with that character in the later books, if he's going to show up at all. But I feel like him appearing in this book kind of suggested that we're going to see Rook again, so... Now let's talk about Froggy, shall we? Oh, Froggy, your life is so awful. I am so sorry. Oh my gosh. Okay, first of all, loves this woman, gets cursed and turned into a frog. Then he gets turned back into a human again, but nope, JK, he's a frog again. Then hey, he meets Red Riding Hood. They fall in love. They're gonna get married and then he gets stolen from the altar and then trapped in a magic mirror where we're to assume that he's never going to get out. We saw magic mirrors in the second book in Enchanted Returns. Her love was lost in a mirror. There were special circumstances where he got out, but this isn't a special circumstance. He's trapped in the mirror. Like, at the end of this book, we are left with Red mourning slash sobbing the fate of her to be husband, and Froggy, who we've all grown to love and care about so much, is trapped in a magic mirror, presumably never to be let out ever again. And I just have to say, a lot of people like to believe that Chris is Froggy, like they imagine Chris as Froggy, so I, I now wonder why Chris makes Roddy's life so awful? <laughs> because if my entire fan base thought one of my characters was based off of me, I definitely would not make that character's life as awful as possible. <laughs> but at the same time, it's also, like, that plot probably hurt the most with Froggy and Red with me in this book because I adore Froggy so much and his life just keeps getting worse and, ugh, my heart, I can't, I can't take it. One other thing I just loved about this book was the fact that Chris used all of the characters from the other fairy tales that they hopped into, like Peter Pan and the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz and King Arthur, obviously, and 
Robin Hood. Like, he used all these familiar characters that I've grown up with my whole life and that, like, millions of people have grown up with all their lives and, like, use them to advance the story more because, like, little things made me smile. There were little references to Wizard of Oz, like, the original story that people aren't really familiar with. And he actually, like, nods at that at one point, being like, oh, yeah, I forgot that happened because it wasn't in the movie. And I just thought that was really, really awesome. As someone who actually reads, like, classic fairy tales, I really, really enjoyed the little things he put in that a lot of people maybe won't get right away or things that'll bring back nostalgia on some of the readers just because that's been with them all their lives. So I thought that was really, really cool. Overall, I gave this book a 4 out of 5 on Goodreads. It wasn't my favorite in the series. That title still goes to Grim Warning for now. But I did love it. It was a little bit shorter than the others, I think. And I kind of felt a little unsatisfied at the end because the story didn't really, like, wrap up. Like, the story arc of them traveling through the books didn't wrap up at the end of this book. Like, literally... The last page of this book. Let's flip, 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 flip. Which stories are you talking about? Connor paused just as he was about to step through the curtain. Mine, he said. So that suggests that they're still going to be like story hopping in the next book, which kind of bothers me. Like, he couldn't wrap up that story arc in this book, but I guess I'll have to just wait until next year when the next book comes out to see whether or not that was a good decision or not. Maybe he did it for a reason. I don't know. But it just bugs me a little bit because I just wish that that arc would have been closed up a little more. But maybe it's also just because I was wishing that there was more to this book or that the next one was out already just because I want to know what happens next. I really, really did like it and I can't wait for the next book to come out. And obviously I will support Chris Colfer and everything he does for the rest of his life, probably. <laughs> And I don't just like these books because they're written by Chris. I like these books because they actually are amazing, despite the fact that I am a senior in high school reading books aimed at ages 10 to 12. All right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you want to get more updates from me on what I'm reading or what I'm doing, you can follow me on Tumblr in the link down below. And um, you can friend me on Goodreads. If you want to follow me on Tumblr, I'm currently doing a live blog reading of the Mortal Instruments series. And it's kind of interesting so far because I've been at it for about a month and I'm still only halfway through the first book, but I'm getting through it. I'm working on it. So eventually there will be a video summing up my thoughts on the Mortal Instruments series. Other than that, I will be trying to make video reviews and hauls and whatnot on the regular. So if you want to stay updated on what I'm doing on YouTube, you can click the subscribe button below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. But, no, he isn't. He's 24. I have to stop doing that in my video, stopping to Google things. Um, finally, I did an intro. I, no, outro. It's an outro. Wow. I just want to compliment myself on the good outro, and then I screw up the word outro. Okay, I'm done. I'm done.